بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم functional ovarian cyst or what we call it physiological ovarian cyst so all what you have to know about it it is common occur in reproductive years usually asymptomatic but can produce symptoms because of cyst accident as hemorrhage rupture torsion or the hormonal effects that's why the name we called functional ovarian cyst and most will disappear in a few months without needing any treatments Functional ovarian cysts uh, are of three types. Follicular cyst, it means that the follicles that fail to ovulate. Luteal cyst, it means that the corpus luteum that fails to regress. And we have a theca luteum cyst. Coming first to follicular cysts. As we said, it originates from secondary follicles that fail to ovulate. It's seen in reproductive life, but still we can see it in the pre-puberty, as in juvenile hypothyroidism, but we will not see it in postmenopausal women. It may be single or multiple. It may be spontaneous, spontaneous or induced. Induced one usually is multiple, and it may occur because of drugs, as in ovulations, inductions, or stimulations, or we can see it in what? In endometrial hyperplasia. Now, the ultrasound features, it shows that usually it is unilocular, a thin wall with unequal contents. Usually we will have here posteriorly acoustic shadowing. And if we do a color Doppler, there is no color flow Doppler and there is no solid components inside it. The size of it is usually 3 to 7 centimeters and rarely exceeds 8 up to 10 centimeter. And it will resolve spontaneously within 6 weeks up to 3 months. It may be symptomatic or associated with complication, as we said. Now, coming to the guidelines of the Royal College about follicular cysts. If the size less than 5 centimeters there is no need even for follow-up, and this will resolve usually within three months. If the size between five to seven centimeters, some said, some guidelines said we have to repeat after six months, but still Royal College guidelines, they said you repeat it after one year. Now, if, if it persists, then we will do CA-125. As we said previously, there is no need to do, to do CA-125 initially, but, if the size is more than 7 uh, centimeters, we have to consider other imaging as MRI because it is difficult to see the contents of it and difficult to exclude uh, uh, malignancy. Now, what are the indications for intervention? As we said, follicular cysts usually resolve spontaneously. So the indication if the patient comes with acute symptoms and this symptoms is severe and uh, doesn't resolve within 24 hour, if it is associated with complication as hemorrhage and the patient is hemodynamically unstable or torsion, or if it increased in size or did not regress after uh, a certain period of time, and if there is a suspicion of malignancy. We see in this picture that the Follicular cyst usually thin wall and the content is clear, but sometimes it may be what? It may be hemorrhagic if it is associated with hemorrhagic complication. Now, what are the surgery? Rule of surgery, either we will do it by lapotomy or by laparoscopy. And again, as we see here, the wall is thin and the content is clear. We have to take in consideration since it is functional and since it occur in reproductive years you have to take all the precautions to preserve fertility even if it is big one and if it is big one and to preserve fertility we can even deer off it and take the contents out and we can gently remove the capsules of it is there other modalities of a treatment yes what is the place of ovarian cyst aspiration before we do such an operation, we have to take considerations of the following. We should have typical ultrasound picture. We should do CA-125 before performing it. And we have to have a clear indication that this is symptomatic 
or the surgery is difficult because she is obese or because she has a previous surgery. And we want to start art and we cannot because of the presence of this cyst. But we have to again to take in consideration that there is a drawback of this procedure. Why? Because there is risk of recurrences and the cytology that we take it from it give a poor predictive value and low sensitivities about the, about the natures of it. And there is a risk of preoperative spillage of malignant cells if there is any. This picture or ultrasound shows the needles inside the cyst and we take it out by uh, using a transvaginal ultrasound with the needle of pickup or, or size pickup, the same one. Now, is there a place for medical treatments? Now, meta-analysis revealed that there is no differences between using pills or not using it. And what we want to do, only we have to follow the patients and we, for certain period of time, what is this period of time? There is different guidelines speaking about this period of time. But they said up to, most of them, they said up to one year. Now, if we have a recurrent symptomatic ovarian cyst, is there a place for medical treatments? Good practice points some, some patients with a history of recurrent painful ovarian cyst are managed with hormonal contraception to inhibit ovulation and to prevent the formations of a new physiological ovarian cyst. Coming to the corpus luteal, luteum cyst or corpus luteal cysts. As we said, it's follow ovulation, so the usual times of presentations after day 21 of the cycle and the usual time of presentations and complications again after CD21. Ultrasound features, the wall of it is thicker than that of follicular cyst. The size of it is between two to five, but again, it can reach to big size. If we do a color flow Doppler, as we will see in the next slide, we will see that there is a ring of fire and there is a differential diagnosis of it. Mainly we have ectopic pregnancy. The cyst, because of the blood contents in the case of complication, there will be a spider web appearances or there will be a clot. And we have to differentiate between a blood clot from solid by doing what? By doing again color flow Doppler. And if we push by probe, we will see a jelly-like movements to differentiate between the clots and solid parts. In most cases, hemorrhagic cysts will resolve within six, week, uh, six to 12 weeks without any intervention. Now, the ultrasound pictures of uh, hemorrhagic of uh, corpus luteal cyst will give a different pictures according to the age of the corpus luteum and according to the age of the associated intracystic uh, uh, intra hemorrhage. So either there will be a spider whip appearances, as we see here, or we call it a lice-like echo pattern, or there will be a clot, clot. And as we said, this clot, there is no color flow Doppler inside it. And if we push it by the probe, there will be what? There will be a movement, jelly-like movements. And the Doppler, uh, Doppler of it, there will be a typical ring of fire, as we see here. And this, again, there is a, a corpus luteal cyst with different stages and different um, uh, hemorrhagic contents and different developments of it. Now, what are the differential diagnoses? On the top of the list, we have ectopic pregnancy, and we have to correlate it because it is difficult to differentiate between ectopic pregnancy and corpus luteal cyst by ultrasounds uh, uh, again uh, sometimes. So we have to take in consideration the history, the beta SCG, if we see intrauterine pregnancy, ring of fire presence in both of them, and if we see a significant free fluid in pouch of Douglas and endometrioma, which have atypical pictures, but again, sometimes it is difficult to differentiate and sometimes we have to use an MRI. What about the treatments? Usually, as we said, it associates with the pregnancy and it supply progesterone up to 10 weeks, but usually it will resolve uh, at the end of the second trimester. The cyst, again, less than three centimeters, even does not necessitate follow up. The complications on the top of the list, we have hemorrhage or we have a rupture. And this laparoscopic view shows a hemorrhagic corpus a luteal cyst. Now, these pictures, we will see two different pathology. 
we will see two different pathology. How we can differentiate between a corpus luteal cyst and ectopic pregnancy by ultrasounds. Now, if we, if we manipulate transvaginal ultrasounds, the probe inside, and we do sliding maneuver, we will see that we will see that the ovarian cyst is within the compositions of the ovary, within the compositions of the ovary. It is not sideways as the ectopic pregnancy. And again, if we see that uh, around the cyst, we, they, they will be a less ecogenic than that of ectopic pregnancy. And if we put a Doppler studies after this view, after that we said it is inside the ovary and uh, by sliding movements, and it is less ecogenic around, we will see the ring of fire presence in both. But here, as we see, there will be a more, more, uh, uh, more, uh, it is more brighter, and there is even empty uterus, other features of ectopic pregnancy, and we can see even contains yolk sac plus minus uh, fetal pole. And there is typical what we call a donut signs. This is a donut signs because of what? Because of more brighter than ectopic pregnancy. So taking all these in considerations, it, we can differentiate bet between a ring of fire signs seen in ectopic pregnancy from that seen in a corpus luteal cyst. Coming to the third one, which is a theca luteal cyst. They are typically multiple and seen bilaterally, filled with clear citro-colored fluid. Why? Because it is from the corpus luteum. Histologically, there will be a hyperplasia of the theca interna cells. And the, these cysts result from exaggerated physiological stimulations and are usually associated with elevate, markedly elevated beta HCG. And again, these cysts result after pregnancy. What are the associations? Usually, we see it in a gestational trophoplastic disease, polycystic ovarian syndrome, and especially if there is a complications of it, and sometimes it is even difficult to differentiate between it and between um, hyperstimulation syndrome, and diabetes, and alloimmunization because of a big placenta, and in multiple gestations again. We can see it rarely in a chronic renal disease and uh, a hyperthyroidism, and we can see it as a complications of ovulations inductions. And even sometimes we can see it spontaneously in what? Spontaneously in uncomplicated pregnancy. By ultrasound, the ovaries, both of them will be enlarged. They will be, uh, there will be uh, multi-cystic ovaries and uh, the wall of it is what? The wall of it is thin. The wall of it is thin, so multilocular, clear contents, and thin wall. Sometimes we can see even solid elements because of the possibilities of the residual ovarian trauma. This is a typical uh, theca luteal cyst seen where? Seen in a uh, gestational trophoplastic disorder. Differential diagnosis uh, for large, multi, multiple bilateral ovarian cysts we consider as we said, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome as a complications of ovulations, inductions, or stimulations, and associated with even a free fluid. And we can see it again with malignancy as a mucinous uh, ovarian malignancy and granulosa cells tumor. Uh, and now it is difficult. We have to use MRI and we have to use what? We have to use tumor marker. Treatment, it will resolve spontaneously um, following evacuations of a molar pregnancy the associated theca luteal cyst will resolve within three to four months. There are case reports of normal pregnancy associated, as, as we said, with them, and it will resolve gradually even after delivery. And surgical emergency is only indicated if there is ovarian torsion. Slide exam. This ultrasound view shows unilocular cysts with a clear fluid discovered accidentally by doing ultrasound to 34 years asymptomatic woman. Give me the differential diagnosis. This is one. Two, how you will differentiate between these differential diagnoses. Thank you.